What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. Okay, so shortly after Apple released iOS 10.3 to the public, Apple is back with their first beta for watchOS 10.4 in the form of beta 1, and we'll be installing it like we traditionally do on our Apple Watch Ultra 2 to see what's new. For those of you that follow the channel, you would know 10.3 was really nothing substantial. However, I do feel like it personally did help our battery life and consistency of those double tap gestures if you take advantage of those or have an applicable device that can take advantage of them. Having said that, hopefully we'll have some new features in this build. Might need to do a deeper dive at a later video and see what we can actually find, but let's jump right into it, take a look at the build number, and really talk about the release schedule for this because I think it actually might come sooner than later. Let's go. Okay, so as you can see right off the bat, watchOS 10.4 beta 1 just finished installing and we have a new splash screen. So all this is really saying is that your update was complete and then your Apple ID information is used to enable Apple services when you sign in, including iCloud backup, which automatically backs up your data on your devices in case you need to replace or restore it. Your device serial number may be used to check eligibility for service offers and then you can obviously see how your data is managed by clicking on that orange link or say OK and continue on right to your actual unlocking of your device into your actually watch face. So again, new splash screen, kind of interesting that they have that there. That's the first time I've actually seen a new splash screen on watchOS, but here we are. Needless to say, also, this is probably going to be a pretty quick video for you guys today. I haven't seen anything new or read anything new in regards to this just yet, which is somewhat surprising. But nonetheless, this device did pull in the update at about 750 megabits or megabytes, and it did take a little longer than normal to install, which was somewhat surprising, but not uncommon. But I did just want to let you guys know right off the bat. Let's go ahead and jump right into settings and actually see what kind of build number we have. If you guys follow the channel, you would know too, watchOS 10.4 possibly does have a later than normal build number, similar to what watch, or excuse me, iOS just came out with last week. So yeah, sure enough, this does have a G build. And as you can see here, let me see if I can focus it for you guys. This is running 21T5185G as the build number here. The G signifies it is much later in the alphabet than what we are typically used to seeing on an initial beta, which could mean that there are quite a few number of betas to come for this. Now, having said that, we kind of do have a little tip of the hat from Apple, thanks to the EU and all those changes for the side loading of app stores and all of that stuff for when this could be released. And that is in early May or excuse me, early March, actually. One thing that we always do like to check on is jumping in the app and going under gestures and seeing if there's any new updates to obviously Double Tap, which they try to heavily promote. And literally seems to be pretty similar here, but we have that one new option here that says ignore Double Tap when using Vision Pro. This is good to see and something I really didn't think about ahead of time. But if you are using those same pinch gestures as you would on Apple Pro, it could be triggering something on the Apple Watch. So it is nice to see that they included this to be excluded when using Apple or Vision Pro. So I'm going to actually turn that on because that is something we're going to use since we will be getting uh, Vision Pro as crazy as it sounds in about five days. So nothing else new in that regard. Let's actually take a look at the app and see if there's anything new in Double Tap there. Obviously, the big telling feature is going to be how well the battery life is going to be on this build, just because we have no idea yet. Um, nothing right here. Let's actually go into clock. There we go. Switch to swap white watch faces. That all looks the same as it did ever since they added the swipe to watch or swipe to switch features. Um... Let's see gestures again here. Double tap, cover to mute. Yeah, so just like the double tap gestures in general, you do not have the option to switch through them right in the watch. You have to do it in your phone. Uh, definitely interesting. Not sure why they keep doing that and not making it so you can do it all on the watch itself, but okay, it is here. I apologize, guys. Sorry about that. We're seeing it at the same time you guys are, so it is here. You just had to go into the extra menu to find that. 
Aside from that, since we've been talking about Double Tap, let's put it on like we traditionally do and see how it actually works, if it's going to be consistent as it has been or not. Oh, there you go. You can see it's saying our watch update's complete. Dismiss. Okay, and it is working pretty well as it was before. So the big question is just going to be how well is battery life going to hold up? We had great battery life on 10.3. Hopefully that continues here on 10.4. Aside from that, that really looks to be the only update here as we do a deeper dive and as we get acclimated with our battery on this watch on beta one, we'll let you know and we'll do a follow-up if needed. Thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.